Hi Carp Builders, um, I'm Iceni Tom. Um, I thought I'd do a quick video explaining the electrical system on the uh, cart that I'm building. I, I'm building with my kids, I've got a blog on my website and there's a link below um, going through the build process. Um, I plan to do a mock-up of the electrical system anyway, so I thought I'd video it. Because I bought all the, um, the controller and the various devices online with no wiring information whatsoever. So I've had to reverse engineer everything and I wanted to check before I put it on the car whether everything worked. This is a normal process in industrial engineering with control panels and you call it a factory acceptance test. So um, here's all the different various items. So to start with, we've got the power source, the battery pack. Now uh, for this, this mock-up, I've used three 12 volt sealed lead acid batteries wide in series, so you've got 12, 24, 36 volts. This, the, this battery pack is probably good for 15, 20 minutes if I was to put it on the cart now, maybe not even that. With the final build, I'll definitely use um, a bigger pack, maybe 15 amp hour batteries, or, or possibly even go down a lithium ion route, which is a lot lighter, but a lot more expensive. Um, quick word about safety. Now this is only a 36 volt system, but you could potentially get a shock off it. If you've got a pacemaker, that could be really dangerous. Um, also, with, with this system, you run a greater risk of fire than anything else because of the sparks produced when you're connecting terminals. So if you don't know what you're doing, don't muck about with it. Um, right, so this is a battery pack. This is the motor. This is a brushed, um, brushed motor. 36 volts, 800 watts. Should be good to propel the kids up to about 20, 25 miles an hour on the cart, um, but they don't need to go that fast if I can limit it. Um, pretty standard device used on electric scooters, quad bikes, that sort of thing. Um, next, we've got the controller. Now, this is a uh, Chinese made controller, it, um, it's a power electronics device that basically regulates the power to the motor, takes power from the battery, uh, input signals from the various devices, and by triggering MOSFETs, controls the power to the motor. Uh, it will use a system called pulse width modulation, which basically is not a true DC voltage, it simulates it by changing a square waveform to the motor. Um, now, if you're a um, young engineer looking for an area of study, power electronics is one of the things I'd recommend studying. It's um, renewable energy, electric cars, they all need power electronics. And the smoother, more efficient power electronic systems you can get in place, the better your um, machines will be. Um, next we've got the input devices. First, most important is the ignition switch. So this is the wires to the ignition switch. This contact needs to be made for the uh, machine to come on. Actually, this one. So you have that on, and that means everything can now power up. Just a simple device telling the system everything's good to go. You can have that as a key switch on your car. Next, we've got the accelerator. Um, I'll just take the brake off. Now, the accelerator is a three wire device. You've got power, ground, and signal. The accelerator itself isn't a potentiometer, which a lot of people think it is. It's actually called a Hall Effect device, which is a magnet moving across, and it, it changes the voltage across the signal wire, which then tells the integrated circuit in the controller how quickly and, um, and the frequency of firing the MOSFETs to regulate the speed on the motor. Another way of selecting speed is this three-wire device here. It's a bit like having a gearbox on your uh, motor, but electronic. And you've got three speeds, slow, medium, and fast. You see we've got a green wire, a black wire, and a yellow wire. The black wire is the ground, and you change the speed by either connecting the green wire to ground, the yellow wire to ground, or nothing to the ground. So I want to move the switch forward here, like that. The yellow wire and the ground are connected and that's our slow speed. You can hear that. 
Then we move it the other way and we connect the green wire to the ground. That's our medium speed. And then we put it in the middle and that's our fast speed. This, this switch is called a double pole, double throw switch. So basically you're, you're changing the contact over from either yellow to green. So that's the way that switch works. Now last and probably most importantly, this is the brake cutout switch. Um, I've simulated it by using a normal switch here, but it will, in, in practice, I'll either have a magnetic switch or a, um, or a little micro switch on the brake pedal. Um, this is so important because it cuts out the motor when the, when the brake is pressed. So um, we've got the motor going along here, full speed. Now if the brake is pressed, it cuts everything out. This is really important because if you don't have this system, the, um, you, could, you could cook your brake discs. You're also braking with your left foot on a go-kart, so there's potential of pr pressing the brake and the accelerator at the same time. Um, the controller has several other switches here. You've got two more brake switches, and you've also got a, uh, a switch here, uh, an indicator here telling you how much battery voltage you've got with a voltmeter. I might put that on, haven't decided yet. Um, if you've got any questions or comments or you need to know anything else, I'll try and help you out as much as I can. Um, have a look at my blog and keep sparring. Speak to you again.